Okay, this uh, this uh, presentation is about the work of the Risk Fire Foundation, originally put together by Callista Redmond, who I briefly met a few months ago. And uh, we'll take through the evolution of the idea of risk processes. In the 1980s, there was a, a big battle between like CISC and RISC. Uh, CISC more or less won that one, I think, probably fair to say. And uh, RISC chips became more of a niche. Uh, in the 1990s, the lifespan of the CPU designs began to shrink and uh, performance increased. Moore's law, I'm sure you're all familiar with, and meant that process of performance was doubling roughly over 12 to 18 months. <coughs> uh, and in parallel, computing needs diverged right across implementations, service to cars. And uh, that saw, and as a result of that, that saw the uh, emergence of ARM, which is uh, the dominant player in this space at the moment. In uh, 2000s, uh, performance again became ever more critical. Uh, <laughs> and mobile, of course, really came to prominence. Mobile is a really big driver of innovation, continues to be to this very day. And we foresaw the world's first 2 billion transistor microprocessor, which is Intel Latanium, announced in 2008. And grassroots open course, such as open, open risk and open spark. So that's kind of like the seeds of where we are today. And today we've seen the exponential growth uh, of diverse computing needs from IoT, edge computing, AI, lots of interesting technologies coming on stream now. And they're all solved by, they can be solved by custom processor development. There are lower bar barriers to entry now than there's ever been, I think. Uh, open processors, uh, open IP, that's intellectual property, uh, such as open power, RISC-V and MIPS. And the RISC-V specification is free. You can download it. And it's open with extensions, tools, implementations, and software underway. The chip outlook is basically uh, <laughs> that would curve, as you can see. So in addition to the baseline growth, there's been lots of um, adoption of tech, this kind of technology uh, right across uh, a wide range of verticals, such as 5G autonomous vehicles, AR, VR, and AI. Uh, the next big thing which you've heard a lot about, I'm sure, is 5G. That's going to be a real driver for growth. Um, when it will happen <laughs> is an open to question. It's starting to be rolled out. Now, the global trends, if you take a step back and look at global trends driving uh, process of growth, uh, we can see cloud and data center applications. Automotive is going to be a big one. Driverless cars, you know, there's a lot of research going to that at the moment. Industrial IT, IT that's uh, industry four, as some people call it. Uh, that's mobile and wireless, again, big driver. Consumer IT devices, uh, you've started to see increasing uh, adoption of consumer devices that we know now. Uh, and we've got Alexa or anything like that, Google, no? Oh, well. Uh, and of course, memory. Uh, memory is the largest semiconductor in the category of our sales, with 158 billion in 2018, and very fast growing rate, rate of growth, 27% per annum. <coughs> okay, so then to our kind of workloads, uh, they demand the process of flexibility. The, the old legacy instruction sets, that's ISAs, these are some of these are decades old. Okay. Now, what RISC V does, it unlocks the architecture and enables innovation. And of course, if it's open source, RISC V's open source is transparent and royalty free. So, RISC V will usher in a new era of silicon design, which is, as the diagram shows, we go around clockwise, it will be simple, stable, modular, designed for extensibility, and a clean slate design. So, welcome to the RISC V revolution. Um, the, the heart of this is the RISC V Foundation. It's a non profit entity based in California. Um, is it still in California or has it moved to Switzerland? Yeah. It's in progress. It's in progress. Okay, so it's moving Switzerland. Okay. Uh, so, the mission is to accelerate RISC V adoption, share benefits to the entire community of stakeholders. Uh, it does it through development of specifications, compliance suites, other technical deliver deliverables. Um, to grow the overall ecosystem. Uh, membership, anyone can join, by the way, you don't have to pay any money, you can join as a private individual. Uh, and uh, one of the goals, of course, is to uh, try and ward off the danger of fragmentation, which is a you know, real possibility. And also the deepen community engagement and visibility through 
various kind of working groups and conferences. And again, the, one of the most interesting features of this RISC V is the frozen user base spec released in 2014. And that's been ratified and published by the RISC V Foundation. And the idea is these instructions <coughs> will never change, they're immutable, that's the idea. And then you can build extensions onto that basic architecture. Oh, lots of information here. Uh, I'll just give you a few examples. Uh, you get risk five support in Free Artos kernel, which I think is owned by Amazon these days, isn't it? Free Artos? Is it? It's free still. <laughs> well, it's uh, something like that. Hard to keep track of all these things. Uh, EU is processing, progressing with a process for the European super, supercomputer, and, uh, which is based on risk five. And of course, Western Digital is a very interesting application. Uh, they released a risk five course to the world. Uh, and they've been one of the kind of early drivers, commercial drivers of risk five. Western Digital. Oh, who's using this? This is already out of date. You can see all the logos. There's, uh, but I guarantee you that's already out of date. Yeah. But uh, lots of big companies, some British ones like Raspberry Pi, um, Metagraphics, people, lots of all the big names there, basically. Um, I go, going back to membership, you can see that there's more than 350. Again, it's a slightly old slide. I don't know what the current numbers are, but it's going up and up and up. So, uh, Almost every major country in the world now has um, some organisation involved in RISC-V. RISC-V Summit, that's the 20th, that shows how old this slide is. <laughs> the number of uh, attendees at 2018 RISC-V Summit. What was the figure for this year, do you know, Jeremy? 1,600. Sorry? 1,600 approximately. 1,600, oh, so that's definitely going up, sort of 30% increase roughly. And of course, it's getting lots of press coverage, and it's kind of like the early stage of the, the hype cycle, you know, we say. Okay, so what, what membership does the Risk Foundation give you, give your organization? Uh, basically, it multiplies the investment that our members are making in risk, and it does that really through building the, the ecosystem. Uh, the technical deliverance, learning and talent, compliance and certification, very important. Lots of visibility through media, uh, advocacy and outreach, and also through actually starting to build a marketplace for these products. Engaged, uh, 20, oh, so these are the, like the tasks for kind of the uh, working groups, which I mentioned earlier. Um, you can join them, I think. Uh, I think that's a private citizen, I think you can sign and join these, I think you can. Yep, so there's something there that can use your skills, well, certainly. Uh, it's already, risk is already disrupting the silicon industry. ARM, for example, has responded in a more flexible manner than previously. Um, so, we live in interesting times. All thanks to risk -Fi.